The objective of this learning video is to highlight a variety of methods which can be referred to as disaster risk mitigation techniques. These are activities which can be used to reduce the risk of damage to land, crops and livestock caused by natural disasters such as bushfires, hurricanes, floods and invasion of pests. Here are some of the methods adopted by farmers in other parts of the world. At the east coast of India, this coastal fishing community has been severely affected by tsunamis, hurricanes and cyclones. In order to protect their land, their livestock, the coastal line and their community itself, these villagers have planted a massive amount of fast-growing pine trees that act as a bioshield. The bioshield protects their land from natural disasters that commonly occur in that part of the world. The bioshield also contributes to the sustainability of their livelihood as it provides natural resources. In Gaibandha, a rural area of India, regular floods and river erosion causes loss of crops and homes. With the help of Practical Action Bangladesh, simple but innovative technologies were created and introduced to fit in with the livelihoods of these rural people. These technologies are functional within the existing environment and assist in combating natural disasters. Sandbar cultivation was introduced as a form of production to make the best use of marginal lands and to combat against pests. Here is a diagram which illustrates sandbar cultivation used to grow and harvest pumpkins. Floating gardens are another method of vegetable cultivation. This method of layering, which allows many types of vegetable crops to be grown despite the threat of flood waters. This diagram illustrates this technology. In Trinidad and Tobago, many farmers are faced with flash floods which destroy crops. This farmer in the south of the country has had a nearby river dredged to allow a deeper and wider path for the passage of water. In doing so, he protects his crops from flood damage. One of the objectives of the United States National Weather Service is to mitigate property loss by issuing the best early warning and forecast data available. In order to do so, this institute makes use of a variety of machines which measure wind speed, rainfall levels and a multitude of other climatic data. At the University of the West Indies Agricultural Field Station, there are a variety of instruments which can be used to serve this purpose. However, due to inactivity, the valuable information it provides is not distributed to agricultural stakeholders on a timely basis. The Hurricane Center of the U.S. National Weather Service has created alternative formats of their website so that users of this type of agricultural information can have access to weather forecasts and patterns on a timely basis long before a disaster occurs. These formats include a text-only version for users with slow or inefficient internet connections and a mobile version for cell phone and smartphone users who can access information at any time. This blog highlights a simple form of food production called multi-story gardens. Originating from Kenya, this technology uses tin cans and a focus bag. The cans are punctured with holes filled with stones and placed one on top of the other to the center of the cocos bag. 
Soil is placed around the cans inside of the bag. Holes are then placed around the circumference of the bag. Therefore, crops can be grown to the top of the bag and all around the bag. Water can then flow from the top to the bottom of the construction through the tin cans. Using this method, water and space is conserved. More importantly, in the event of an oncoming disaster, the multi-story garden can easily be moved to a safer location, preventing crops from being damaged.